project and another project show me a project where there is sustainable growth and the founder hasn't worked for 3 to 5 years there is no project like that no not in web3 not in web2 nowhere in the world hello everyone welcome to impact 3.0 a podcast where we simplify complex crypto conversations so that you can be ahead of the curve today we have parin lathia with us uh uh the co-founder of builder stripe a web3 incubator and an advisory firm he was also the ex avp marketing of wazirx uh he's a very big yoga geek and a fitness follower welcome parin to the podcast thank you ayush for having me awesome so uh before starting parin uh you know a uh, lot of people ask what is your web3 journey but today i want to ask you you were already working in web2 and then you made a transition to web3 so you want to know a little bit about yourself uh, how you started in web3 and and more about your journey in web2 as well and how how did you make the transition so i think uh, like most people you know stumble upon some coins mm-hmm. and some uh, trading activity that's happening uh it was not called web3 back then it was called crypto and people used to think that these assets are what is going to change the world right uh hardly any talk about tech hardly any talk about how this enables uh decentralization but uh this is a gateway mm-hmm. everyone gets into this saying hey this bitcoin thing looks interesting i don't know what is going to happen but yeah. now you get into the rabbit hole and then uh you look at the technology Uh, of course like most people uh, when i joined in the last cycle uh, i ended up making a lot of losses uh, but during the bear market definitely there was one thing which was clear that the technology has real promise yeah. it is going to solve a lot of problems that humanity hasn't been able to solve for thousands of years mm-hmm. uh, which is trustless transactions transparency on chain ownership uh, and you know there is some kind of a community governance built around it and that is when i realized that this technology is extremely important now uh, it also solves some of the centralization problems that were created by web2 companies uh, when uh, i was i was heavily into web2 building a saas product 10 years ago uh, i saw uber amazon and a lot of uh, other companies coming up with a promise saying hey we'll be better uh then the existing systems what happened is now today when you look at uh any of these apps the seller is not happy the cab driver is definitely not happy and the user a uh, customer mm-hmm. common people like us we are not happy as well so mm-hmm. what happened here and what really really happened is uh, centralization we yeah. don't know where my surge pricing commission is going it's definitely not going to the drivers and mm-hmm. why is there no transparency mm-hmm. uh and that actually made me see the promise of this technology awesome awesome that that was, that was a very good explanation uh jumping on to builder stripe that's been the hot topic in the space everywhere i go on twitter builder stripe has partnered builder stripe yeah. are the incubators it's it's the talk of the town and i think you parin sir and raghu are doing a very fab- fabulous job uh, in terms of the execution and the entire team uh so yeah uh, i want to specifically talk on builder stripe where did that name came from and how builder stripe is different from all the other uh incubators and 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 the funds that are there so uh see i i've i've been to about five incubators during my web2 journey okay. <laughs> as a participant uh i was doing a saas product and mm-hmm. there was no other way to learn right you had to go and participate uh, learn from founders who've done this from investors who've seen this uh, and peer group who's on the same journey and this is incredibly valuable yeah. uh, when i started investing in in crypto startups early stage investments mm-hmm. uh, a few years ago most of these founders used to come back and say hey uh, can you help me out with figuring my customer acquisition cost yeah. uh, can you help me figure out why my community is not growing and i said hey this was common knowledge in web2 mm-hmm. every founder was expected to know this yeah and we realized that there is a big gap when it comes to web3 mm-hmm. uh, founders are 
create techies, mostly the business side gets left out. Uh, this entire gamut is actually very important for a founder to be successful and build a company that sustains, not a company that just launches a token and goes away. <laughs> so to build sustainable businesses, you need this understanding from day one. Yeah. And there is hardly anyone doing this. So we set mm -hmm. out with this motive saying, let's figure out what a Web3 native incubator looks like. We had no clue when we started. It's been one year now. Wow. Uh, we are still figuring out a lot of things. Uh, but one thing is very clear uh, that, that there is a misalignment mm -hmm. in terms of uh, YC model. So every incubator yeah. operates on a y, on the YC model. That's been the, the way to go, uh, which means there is content given by some mentors. Okay. There is a cohort of peers that learns together and then there is a most of the value is mm -hmm. being added by mentors. YC today or any web creating so much value. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are guiding these startups. But wh what is their incentive today is just charity because the upside is being captured by the incubators fund. Mm -hmm. So if you are a mentor in a YC cohort today, you're practically working with a charity mindset, yeah. whereas the upside is captured by YC's fund, which gives, mm -hmm. which takes that 7% for a lucrative valuation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a mismatch somewhere. Uh, yeah. And this is what, this is what causes a big problem when an incubator tries to scale. So mm -hmm. look at it today from a global perspective. Apart from YC, there is no real incubator that has scaled. Yeah. The moment they try scaling it, they increase the batch size or the core founder mentors leave, mm -hmm. uh, the, there is a quality drop immediately. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are trying to solve here. Yeah. Uh, we still have a long way to go. Uh, we've mm -hmm. figured out certain things that work. Uh, we still have to do a lot more experiments and go ahead and figure this out. But our idea is that community should come together, yeah. mentor founders who deserve it, mm -hmm. uh, choose these founders and also invest in that early round uh, mm -hmm. because they've they've created so much value. They should be the ones who's, who's capturing this value. So that's the core concept right now uh, that we are working on. Awesome. So, uh, Parin, I'm sure you have seen uh, market cycles. Now, this might be your second or the third market cycle. Uh, I want to specifically talk on what is, I mean, what are you most excited about Web3? Which vertical are, are you super bullish on? Uh, I want to even talk on how build and what type of projects even Builders Tribe is undertaking as of now with the bear market. We are seeing VCs uh, you know, uh, stopping or, or the funds have been dried up uh, in the Web3 ecosystem as of now. Um, but but the strong ones are surviving. I want to know from your end, uh, what do you think is, I mean, what are you most bullish on? Which vertical are you most bullish on? Yeah. So, uh, let me just first, first clarify the fact that funds have not dried up. <laughs> VCs have a ton of dry powder right now. They've yeah. raised so much money from their LPs. There is going to be deployments. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a temporary lull in the market silence yeah. uh, because people are figuring out realigning their thesis people mm -hmm. are figuring out their own interests and what are their focus areas uh, mm -hmm. that's what's going on right now but for good founders there is still a ton of money uh, mm -hmm. having said that uh, when we look at uh, founders at builder stripe we don't care what they are building absolutely zero importance whether they are building a DeFi product or an nft or a metaverse or a dao it just doesn't matter. For us, our thesis is very clear. Founder who shows up on a weekly basis really, really uh, achieves something. Uh, okay. We've seen about 1,100 applications in one year of Builders wow. Tribe's existence. Wow. Uh, we work with only 12 startups. Uh, these are spread across sectors, uh, but we get to analyze all of these data. So just about a few months ago, we were analyzing this entire application data and seeing, hey, which startups went on to do good, which means mm -hmm. raising some kind of funding or launching a product in the market, getting some kind of traction. And we realized that this had nothing to do with how good their deck was. Was it a pedigreed founder or not? Mm -hmm. uh, was it a market that's hot right now? Mm -hmm. Nothing mattered. The only correlation that we could find was the fact that founders who kept up showing 
on, on our week. calls week on week basis these were the founders who actually went ahead and raised massive amounts of funds although sometimes their play looked like mm-hmm. this is not going to work this mm-hmm. has some challenges this has regulatory challenges but these founders figured out the solution right and that is what we are most bullish on right now uh the way we do it today is uh, mm-hmm. we've we've launched a product that that has that has the community uh, and community follows a particular startup's progress for months to come as startup start posting weekly updates of whatever progress they have made mm-hmm. they go ahead and get grants mentoring vc intros mm-hmm. funding absolutely anything that they want mm-hmm. awesome so uh, like you mentioned that there are 11000 projects and only uh, 10 to 12 are the one that that 1100 1100 yeah, yeah 1100 yeah. sorry yeah 1100 and out of them uh, you know uh, 11 to 12 are selected uh, so what are the things that that you look right uh, when you are talking to the founders what are those questions that you ask uh, to founders while building what are the right questions and what are the metrics that that you tell them okay, okay if you are building this these these are the basic metrics that should be tracked what are those questions for you yeah so these metrics would differ from uh, sector to sector yeah. so if you are building a defi startup you would check the tvl you would check the average ticket size per uh, transaction that happens on your network uh, if you are looking at a dao you would look at the number of active contributors uh, yeah. on a monthly basis uh, but if i were to let's say generalize this and mm-hmm. go one level deeper and say what is the common thing that every builder should be looking at uh, one is very clearly uh, whether blockchain is needed or not yeah. this is i can't emphasize yeah. how many startups yeah. come up and say i'm going to build this i'm going to build that yeah. but do you really need blockchain to solve this problem if not then don't force fit it that's the biggest thing that we see second thing that we see is most of the founders are coders uh, that's a great thing because they can iterate uh, very fast they can build things out but one of the things that they don't do is talking to the users yeah. uh, one one thing that we emphasize in our mentoring calls is hey, how many users have you talked to every week on a one on one basis are you talking to 3 to 5 users every week this is yeah. a half an hour call that you have to schedule uh, yeah. this actually brings product market fit more than anything else uh, once the product is launched it's it's a complete growth story how are you driving traction to whatever you are doing so it might be uh, for a metaverse startup it might be maus daus uh, for a startup that's building let's say uh, an nft project how many community members are you adding what yeah. kind of engagement is going on in your community so the tactical metrics differ based yeah. on uh, the sector they are operating yeah. in yeah. but overall it's yeah. very clear first is to achieve product market fit you should know that you are coding something that people need yeah. paul graham used to say this famously make things people want yeah. right uh, this is missing today <laughs> you're building stuff in web3 that yeah. mostly no one wants today so left right that's become the problem right now people see the hype on twitter and they are like hey i am a builder and and and, and i'm like hey, do, do these people i mean what you're building is that something that people really want is 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 it a problem first of all but yeah i think if i if i were to emphasize on one thing hmm. absolutely one thing that 10x as a startup survival chance and that no founder does till date is to talk to five users yeah. personally as founders one on one every yeah. week if someone can do that they would never go astray otherwise we've seen founders build a product for 3 months mm-hmm. sit with their team great coders great people very well intentioned mm-hmm. and hard working people they build something after 3 months when they launch it they're like ha huh, no one's using it what happened here yeah. no so this has to go hand in hand your coding is a marketing function yeah. first you're talking to the users getting insights that hey enough people really want what i'm building then you go ahead and build it uh, right now because we're seeing all the founders uh, have 
a lot more tech exposure than business exposure they go inside their ide and they start coding their yeah. morning starts inside ide and evening ends inside the ide <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. A, which is a big detriment yeah awesome so uh so one last thing after all this uh, i i got really pumped up okay these this, this is something that that should be uh, taken from this talk and kept as a separate separate click but uh, finally uh, since the talk is revolving around the founders what is your one key advice to the founders that are building in the bear market uh i would say uh, look at look at the last bear market uh when people say that there is no money with vcs there are no users here uh there is no retail uh, who is participating in tokens uh, all of this is temporary this is all temporary you are working in this industry so any founder who is building anything you are going to spend at least 3 to 5 years of your life doing yeah. this one thing right so you are giving a significant chunk of your life mm. you can't say that i'll dow it and then the community will manage and in 6 mm. months i'll do another project and another project mm. show me a project where there is sustainable growth and the founder hasn't worked for 3 to 5 years there is no project like that no not in web 3 not in web 2 nowhere in the world mm. this is bare minimum time that you are going to spend working on this mm. project so you might as well see when the next bull run comes are you ready for the tailwinds mm-hmm. are you positioning yourself for the tailwinds mm-hmm. today less people are building which means more signal less noise yeah. uh, that's great as yeah. a founder you should be very happy saying hey this bear market wiped out 90% of my competition who yeah. was thinking short term mm-hmm. uh, but if a founder themselves are thinking short term mm-hmm. then this bear market really really hurts someone who wanted to make a million dollars in a year someone yeah. who wanted to launch a token and just go away mm. someone who ended up thinking well intentioned ended up thinking that hey i have a brilliant idea I have a product now i launch this and the community will just take care of this yeah. that's not going to happen you are a founder and founders are needed for a reason Yeah. it's because initially it's a baby you have to take care of that baby till it grows and starts walking yeah. that is when you can give it to the community and say okay now take care of my baby right but that's not going to happen within 3 to 5 years so that's minimum that you're giving yeah. and in 3 to 5 years you will see all of these moves going mm-hmm. the vcs who have raised money from their lps will need to deploy in next 1 and 1/2 ah. years mm-hmm. they have to deploy right so Yeah, if, if, what may I, you will get I, a chance. I know that pressure. I know that deployment pressure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I I I I had uh, actually drawn something and tweeted something out. Mm-hmm. But what I think is this is a game of cockroaches. Yeah. Are you a cockroach who just refuses to die and who is sitting on one problem hammering it for yeah. months and years? Mm-hmm. If you are that founder, no matter what you do, you mm-hmm. are going to succeed. Yeah. make sure that morning to evening you are doing the hard work you are showing up and learning from the market yeah. these are the only things that matter mm-hmm. this bear market is actually a boon for good yeah. builders yeah yeah actually uh talking about the bear market my 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 question was what are your thoughts on the bear market but you have already answered that uh i want to specifically talk on what are your predictions for the next year and even for the next bull market what projects uh do you think will succeed the most uh what type of projects feel specific it's fine maybe it's infrastructure or defi projects but what are your predi- what are your predictions for the next year uh first thing is anyone who is predicting with any kind of certainty is lying to themselves and lying to everyone okay. uh, i have thesis i have okay. thesis uh based on the startup deal flow that we get and based on the vcs that we interact with mm-hmm. uh the thesis is dev tooling Mm-hmm. Uh, and DAOs are probably going to be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, one challenge is uh, creator communities is going to be one big thing, yeah. but there's a regulatory challenge there. Uh, mm-hmm. Once the regulatory challenge is solved by one project, mm-hmm. it opens up the floodgates for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is my personal investment thesis as as an angel investor. It is uh, 
for me dev tooling is going to be massive because today it's extremely hard to develop uh, on web3 protocols uh, and chains someone has got to simplify this uh, and second is daos uh, i do believe that in next 3 years one of the daos will have more than 10 billion in their treasury and that's going to be massive that's going to be so big that uh, wall street will have to come to terms with this uh, people will have to come to terms with the fact that daos are going to be the next iteration of uh, organization uh, of workforce which we call companies today probably a lot of companies yeah. and communities will become daos so yeah. these are the two theses this is just my personal understanding yeah, yeah. Uh, and definitely the certainty is not very very high got it got it so builder stripe is uh, only accepting applications on that, on that not at all so oh, no. we are, we hmm. we don't we don't really yeah. really have any thesis we are chain agnostic yeah. uh, we do we work with 60 odd vcs with different thesis yeah. some some of them conflicting at times uh, and we don't care what the founder is building literally we don't care what the founder is building what we care is is the oh, founder yeah. persistence hmm. persistent enough if the founder is persistent enough we are willing to give them absolutely anything that that we can awesome uh that was all the founders and builders tribe and the vc and the entire web3 ecosystem talk uh, now i want to talk about parin as a person so parin Ooh. what motivates you to push forward uh wow sorry uh, sorry see, for those so, tough questions but no no, no. yeah I I don't think I've said ever said this on on any uh, channel or podcast or anything, but a uh, lot lot of introspection that we have to do. Why are we doing this in the first place? Uh, money we'll make just by trading. Making money is not that difficult in crypto, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, or by investing. Uh, the reason we do this is because, uh, frankly speaking, there was a time ten mm-hmm. years ago when I was applying to YC every year, uh, literally every year. Mm-hmm. and uh, i was trying to learn how to build a startup wow. uh, in india specifically there was n- almost negligible ecosystem mm-hmm. i could find three or four maybe mentors who were willing to sit with me and say hey uh, this is how a saas startup is built yeah. uh, it was very difficult uh, to get funding if you are if you are a single founder who's mm-hmm. uh, built a product but doesn't have that tailwind uh, in terms of narrative or a yc stamp or a 500 startup stamp yeah. it was extremely difficult and this ecosystem was just being built mm. uh, a lot of people actually guided me and that's when i realized that hey, this is a very simple thing to do mm-hmm. you just pay it forward you mm-hmm. make sure that there is something that's happening uh, in the ecosystem mm-hmm. that makes the founders feel hey there's someone who believes in me founders yeah. are very smart people mm-hmm. uh, founders figure out most of the problems it's like you know you don't as a coach you don't teach kohli how to bat you yeah. don't do that mm-hmm. but you stand behind them and say hey don't worry today is a bad day things yeah. will work out will there work is no out. problem yeah. here's two connects go and drive growth to your product or here are two tech mentors who will come and solve your protocol challenges mm-hmm. right and that support was not accessible to founders mm-hmm. uh, unless you are in in the valley valley had everything rest of the world had nothing so 99% valley 1% rest of the world yeah. today uh, there is a there is a great opportunity mm-hmm. where the world can be 90% right. and valley will be 10% probably right so that is extremely exciting mm-hmm. uh, second thing that's so exciting is Uh, seeing companies like Polygon go global, mm-hmm. Web two. I remember uh, many of my friends were trying to figure out how to crack the US market. Uh, mm-hmm. No one was able to sell their products globally. So mm-hmm. biggest of brand names from Web two in India are still Indian brands. Right? Yeah. Zomato operates in India. Swiggy operates in India. Flipkart is India. Uh, this mm-hmm. never happened. That you build from India and then you go global. Mm-hmm. This. exciting thing polygon has opened up people's yeah. minds to this and say hey yeah. now look at this we are conquering the world hmm. we were built in india hmm. and that is extremely exciting uh, personally i think 
we want to see 10 more polygons in next two years uh, come out of India and dominate the stack at a level that uh, global eyes are like, wow, Indians oh, yeah. are able to do this. That's extremely exciting. And that is why we get all the Valley support to Indian founders. We, are, we make sure that Indian founders have access to ecosystem grants, chains, mentors from the Valley, uh, mm -hmm. VC funds from Valley, uh, and there's no restriction. You you can today take mm -hmm. global funds, build mm -hmm. a global company. Web3 enables that. That's mm -hmm. extremely bullish for India, so to speak. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, Parin, uh, we talked about what motivates you in life and, and how you look the way forward. I want to even specifically talk that uh, we talk, we always talk about, you know, our successes, right? Uh, and I'm sure you had uh, in your life journey successes as well as failures as well and same goes to every people on this earth so uh, i i don't want to go into specific what those failures were but i want to specifically talk on what is your biggest learning till now that that you would like to share the world ki, okay never do this thing this can cause a lot of problems in your life your biggest learning in life what is that so uh, i really don't mind admitting uh -huh. uh, all of my life has been failure, right? Even today, I can't say it's a success because it's not It's not at the level where I would even want to call it a success. Uh -huh. uh, but it's some progress uh, that has happened in the yeah. last few years, right? Uh, mostly uh, previous startup life, then I lived in Goa for six years, did some non-scalable businesses, uh, built some artist communities out there. Uh, all of this <clears throat> was a failure because nothing scaled, right? Uh, my service business, we were 10 people, 10 programmers working, working for good brands, but nothing to show off. Uh, SaaS product got some revenue, got some term sheets, did not accept those term sheets and moved on. Yeah. Uh, the product generated some revenue for years and then shut it down. Uh, yeah. Same with service businesses in Goa. Uh, did well in the area that we were, uh -huh. but never scaled. Uh, yeah. I I believe that these failures need to be talked about for sure mm -hmm. uh, because it's not truly a failure. Yeah. All of the things that I learned mm -hmm. during those 10 years when I was just like, I know nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I really know that nothing significant is going to happen. Uh, I am actually applying all of that today. And if you would have told me in 2000, uh, 14 that you yeah. will sit and teach founders of 100 million dollar companies mm -hmm. what is customer acquisition cost i would have been like are you crazy are you stupid what are you talking about so, you know yeah. but that is what is happening today yeah. right and that's yeah. something that i learned way back uh, mm -hmm. from different people in my life mm -hmm. so this uh, is something it's it's extremely hard to see yeah uh, it only appears in retrospect uh, but uh, one good thing that stuck in my mind from way back is as a founder, as a as a person who's creatively building something for humanity, which is going to be used uh, probably after we leave this world, right? Yeah. Uh, is that you only need to succeed once. Yeah. Rest of them is always failure. Yeah. So even if you do something successful when you're 50, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it really, really doesn't matter. What actually I have learned and the biggest learning from my life mm -hmm. is that we are too afraid to fail. Yeah. And that is what hinders our success. Unless we see that something is really, really going to work, mm -hmm. we don't get 100% into it. Yeah. Sometimes I know some things are not going to work. Mm -hmm. But does this mean that I don't do it to the best mm -hmm. of my abilities? I don't put in the hard work? Mm -hmm. I have to because only then will I know how this fails. Right? Mm -hmm. Some sometimes we need to know how shit fails yeah. if we don't know that it's very hard to know what's going to work and yeah. frankly speaking there is a ton of luck involved in this but if i don't I throw enough darts yeah. how would i know whether something sticks or not right so we are basically we are throwing darts yeah. how many darts can you throw that's founder's energy uh, yeah. There is a there is a famous quote I don't remember who said this on Twitter, but they say startups don't die when they run out of money. Hmm. They die when they run out of founders' energy. Uh, Unless founder has that energy, this startup is not going to die. 
they are a cockroach and they mm-hmm. will pull through something or the other will happen right and that's the biggest learning one probably thing i'll take the liberty to say mm-hmm. uh, which applies a lot to web3 uh mm-hmm. 10 years i've seen a lot of my peers grow in web2 uh and i realized that uh, people who actually went on to do something mm-hmm. significant mm-hmm. were the people who were constantly working with absolute best of best people okay. so mm-hmm. my biggest learning that i apply today of course now i don't think i have too much fear of failure mm-hmm. it's it's okay if yeah. i fail i go to the beach and chill that's mm-hmm. not an issue yeah, yeah. i don't need too much money to live as well <laughs> but the way i turn my venture into success is mm-hmm. by working only with top of top people yeah you That's don't true. want to work with investors you don't want to work with employees you don't want to work with partners mm-hmm. who are thinking on a short term plane mm-hmm. or who want to do mediocre work so sure. just don't work with anyone who is doing mediocre work Uh-huh. Uh, there might be five people that you can work with but uh-huh. this becomes a powerhouse this uh-huh. creates a mafia that's uh-huh. uh that's almost like paypal mafia yeah. or burp mafia in india right and and now people can't do mediocre job mafia that, I, i'm i'm seeing their eyes on i hope so. no 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 i i i i i I, so. yeah, <laughs> I i i see that okay uh, that was that was, that the, i mean this was goosebumps the entire the, the thing that you told was goosebumps coming to the final question what does yoga and art mean to you and how it has shaped up your life wow. okay so uh see uh, yoga i stumbled up across yoga when my health had deteriorated i I'd, mm. i'd gone through a burnout uh, was mostly lost in life i did not know what i wanted to do uh, frankly speaking this brought a lot of stability mm. saying hey there is, there is a factor uh that is awareness in our life yeah it's very hard to have that mind space and awareness uh because today the world is extremely complex hmm. just booking an uber today is is a task like you have to pay attention to it and then there are 100 other things that are vying for your attention how do you bring these things down how do you live a life where mostly we are surrounded by consumerism uh yeah. people are trying to sell us stuff all mm. the time and we are we are pursuing what is cool right cool. that pursuit of coolness mm. is gone away completely i don't care what is cool really mm-hmm. what i care about is what is valuable to the world mm. what is valuable to humanity what is mm. valuable to other people what is valuable to me uh, mm. as long as that pursuit happens i think uh mm. things work out world rewards us for just creating some value mm-hmm. it may not be a direct reward monetary reward today but mm-hmm. when we are creating value for the world things will happen eventually that's actually the formula that that yoga teaches more than all the fitness and other things mm-hmm. it doesn't matter too much uh, and we don't need too much to live that's that's a very powerful realization uh, extremely powerful uh, realization uh, that's I that's what that. i learned from yoga yeah too too many wishes and then the greed comes up i i i can feel you right now yeah and these these wishes yeah are not organically from mm-hmm. your mind they yeah. have come from some show that you watched yeah. or some movie that you saw mm-hmm. or some subliminal advertising that's just <laughs> pushing you to yeah. buy more stuff all the time so that's mm-hmm. gone that's actually brought a lot of sanity to my life because i now i don't need to buy stuff mm-hmm. uh, at any point so i then i don't need to really really worry about anything yeah. uh, in terms of art that's a very uh, personal thing as well mm-hmm. uh, what i've seen is i've lived so i had an artist hostel in goa where artists used to come and there was a co-working space for musicians writers uh, people who were doing very different kind of things mm-hmm. uh, this place when i lived i realized that you can only speak the truth in this world when you are out of that maslow's hierarchy of need yeah uh, and maslow himself has said the only exception to this rule is artists Uh, as long as you are pursuing that you know la- climbing that ladder yeah. all the time mm. you are going to be controlled by people mm. and when you are going to be controlled by people you can't speak the truth yeah. you just don't have that ability for me art is uh, the ability to free yourself from fears mm-hmm. so that you can speak the truth yeah. <laughs> and probably artists are the only 
ones mm-hmm. today in the world who have an incentive to speak the truth mm-hmm. everyone else has some thing that they are being yeah. controlled by which they will yeah. only adhere to that yeah that was a lovely uh, i mean all the answers were lovely i think there are a lot of things to take back uh, thanks a lot parin for coming on this podcast uh, and thanks for the quick availability as well uh, uh, i'm sure that a lot of people who have subscribed to the channel will take a lot of uh, you know life learnings as well as the web3 learnings that are there uh, so thank you for coming and yeah see you thank you ayush this was this was amazing and glad glad yeah. that you are doing this uh, a lot of people i mm. think will will benefit from an initiative like this thank you thanks a lot parin see you yeah thank you ayush